my name is Rowana. I am a nursing student at the University of Sydney, in case you don't know. And today I wanted to do a day in the life video of kind of like a day that I'm mostly just studying. It is the Stuvac week for me, um, which basically stands for study vacation, I think. And it's a week where I don't have any classes. I have one assessment that I have, like a practical assessment that's on Tuesday which is tomorrow, and then I'm just studying for everything else that's coming up. So I have my clinical placement starting next week, and then two weeks of exams, um, two weeks after that, and then I have two more weeks of clinical placements. So that's what's happening. I thought I'd film a day in the life today to show you what I do on a typical day when I'm studying for not only like a practical assessment, but also for like written exams as well, um, and how I get prepared for that and what I do on a day where I don't have any like obligations in terms of like time, like I don't have to be at a certain place at a certain time. So this is how I organize my day, essentially. Excuse the fact that I have no makeup on <laughs> um, and I'm just, I've just woken up and I've just made myself a cup of tea, basically. My throat is still recovering from my sleep, apparently. So I sound a bit crazy, but yeah, I am gonna go drink my tea, um, get ready I might just chill out for like the next 30 minutes to kind of wake up and then yeah I'll get ready and I have to head off around 8 a.m because I am actually meeting a friend at 9 a.m at uni because we are going to be practicing for our practical assessment in the lab together she has her assessment today and mine is actually tomorrow so I thought I'd go and help her out this morning to kind of um, not only help myself but also help her because she's got a practical assessment this afternoon so yeah that's the plan today, well this morning anyway, I'll see you guys in a minute. I'm home now. I'm just heating up some food for lunch. It is, the time is currently 12.40 and so yeah, I'm starving. I got quite a bit of stuff done at uni. I spent a good two, two and a half hours working on my subject called Social Context of Health and I was just writing up some short answer questions and then writing up plans for how I would answer each of those questions as well. And then I'm going to later on, either today or tomorrow, I'm going to have a look and see if I can write out full answers to those and just practice for how it's going to be in the exam. The reason I actually came home was because the labs at uni were like absolutely packed with people just practicing for the practical assessments which are happening which are happening over the next like three days. So it was just impossible for me to even like to get in there to practice with any of the like facilities. Like I couldn't even get to a mannequin. I didn't have any of the tools that I could use because they were just being used by everyone. So it's it was like pointless for me to be there. I thought I might as well just come home and I can actually even show you guys how I would practice for my practical as well. So yeah. Anyway, now I am going to eat some food and then I might sit down and I might show you actually some of the tools that I'm using to keep on top of the study that I'm doing at the moment. So yeah, I thought I'd show you like my study guides and like Quizlet and all the things that I'm using at the moment. So yeah, <sighs> that's my food. I'm going to go eat now. I'll see you in a sec. Okay. All right, guys, I'm sitting down. I wanted to go through some of the things that I'm using to help me study in this study week and also leading up to my exams which are in about three weeks time so I've just got my iPad here I'm going to show it on the screen as well I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I use to plan my study 
and like how I find that it's very useful, how you can set your own one up as well. And also some other techniques for um, practical assessments, because that's something that comes up a fair bit in nursing school. And if that's something you're doing at the moment or you're looking at doing, then this video might be helpful for you. I don't know. So yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. I'm going to move this over. All right, so I've got my iPad here. So first of all, I am using Google Sheets to set up my study guides. And these study guides are mostly just, it's very basic, but it helps me to kind of think about what I need to work on and what areas I need to improve before the exam. And it gives me a day by day kind of breakdown of things. So I'm, I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's have a look here. I'll, I'll pull one up while I'm talking about it. As you can see, it's um, a little bit full on. And yeah, I'll, I'll just go through kind of overall what this sort of guide is. So this is pretty much called a retrospective study guide or retrospective study planner. I can't remember what exactly it's called, but I initially got the idea from a video by Ali Abdal, who is a doctor in the UK and he's kind of done videos all throughout his uh, medical degree so I yeah I started following him like over a year ago now and he has some really good tips I'll link a lot of his videos down below because they do talk a lot about retrospective study and spaced repetition which is also something that I find really useful for studying as well but yeah if, if you want to find out more about like the in-depth behind the scenes kind of explanation of these sorts of study guides yeah I'll, I'll link the video down below so you should definitely go check it out in my study guide here, you'll see on the left here, I'll pull it over. On the top left, I've just kind of outlined like the date for the exam and like the basic outline and structure of everything. So that would be, for instance, this one has two sections, so section one and section two. Section one has all the multiple choice questions. And this one in particular is about anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, that kind of stuff. Any of those types of details I will put on the left hand side just so I can see them and like refresh in my mind what I need to be revising for and what formats I need to be considering when I'm looking at this these topics basically. I then list like the overall topics so they could be topics that span like one week or one or two weeks and then I've listed next to them the learning objectives or learning outcomes that have been provided by the university or on the lecture slides themselves and then so moving over to the other side, I then have different columns for each of the days that are leading up to the exam. And the way that a retrospective study guide works is essentially you, you have all of the topics listed and um, kind of have a look and see what you've already worked on, how well you were working with them, like how you were tracking. And you can look at it and say, okay, this subject I'm struggling with, or I haven't really looked at this topic in a few days, I might as well go and look at that now. So that's how it works. And I will, I also use a traffic light color coding system. So the ticks are either red, orange, or green. And that basically tells me how I felt when I was studying that topic. You'll notice that the columns are also color coded. How I like to do it is that during the week they're all white and then on the weekends they're grey but if I have something on a particular day like for instance the purple ones are for clinical placements then I'll kind of block them out so I like can get an idea in my head of when I have busy periods and, and when I've got other stuff going on so that I can kind of plan my study accordingly. The reason I don't make a list of what I'm going to do each day for the next few weeks is because it will change like it's it's bound to change basically. I might start studying a topic and say originally I'm going to work on it for two hours and then I get two hours in and I've only studied half of it and I feel like I don't know anything. Whereas I might allocate like an hour or two hours to another subject and I get through it in about 15 minutes and like I, I know everything about it already. So I think this particular guide is a lot more efficient and definitely check out Ali's videos because he goes into a lot more detail as to why it actually is so much better. I can't really explain it. He does a better job than me. But yeah, I think it's a, a like so far it's been working really well for me and I it's like the tool that I much prefer. Also, it's really satisfying when you can like tick things off and you can see things like building up anyway. <laughs> 
some of the other colors that I've put in the columns here are like yellow, which is like my work days. And then I also have some other assessments. So the, the faded red colors are when I have an assessment on another day. So I can kind of like keep it in mind that I've got other things going on on those days and I might be trying to focus on something else on that day rather than studying for this particular subject. Yeah, and then like obviously the final exam is in red <laughs> so that I know exactly when it's coming up. So that's how I plan my study guides. Uh, I have one for each of the subjects that I'm currently doing and that way I can keep track of all of the different objectives and topics within each subject. And also because the exams are on different days, it keeps track of like when I need to do things and that sort of thing. So yeah, that's how I write up my study guides. If you do something similar, then let me know because it would be nice to see how you do it. And if you don't do this, but you do something else, then I'd love to hear about it. So definitely leave me a comment down below and share that with me. While we're here, I might show you the Quizlet questions that I'm writing. Let's have a look. Where is Quizlet? Here it is. So this is something I've talked about in a video previously, but I like to use Quizlet to write up questions for myself so that I can test myself using spaced repetition either throughout the semester or during the study period. I'll just show you one that I've started doing. Where is it? Social con Okay, this is one I did today. With this subject in particular, this is all about the social context of health and it is pretty much an essay based subject or like a short answer, long answer um, based subject. So it's not testing your kind of rote learned knowledge. It's all about critical analysis of topics and understanding how topics um, relate to society in Australia. And it's a little bit more of like a social science sort of subject. To study for this, I've written up some short answer, long answer and essay questions that I can put together and then practice in my own time. So just to clarify, Quizlet is a flashcard app. So you can make flashcards to test yourself for like your knowledge on specific terms and things like that. In this instance, I'm using it to just to like shuffle the questions and that way I'm going to shuffle them and then show like one of the questions each day and I can answer it, that sort of thing. So on the left, you can see front of the card, which is where I've actually written the question. And then to the right, I've just written some points as to what I can write about in relation to what the question is asking. So that's how I'm using Quizlet to do that. Something else that I wanted to talk about is how I practice my CPA. CPA is the clinical placement assessment. That's what it stands for. It's basically a practical assessment. I might just move you guys over, hang on. So it's essentially um, a practical assessment where you get tested on your practical skills and the one that's coming up, which I've actually got my CPA assessment tomorrow. What we have to do is like we have a patient in front of us who's like a mannequin and we get given a specific time and a situation that we're put in. So for this instance, we have to give some medications and we have to do a dressing change for this patient. And there's like, some, like different circumstances that are involved as well that we have to take into consideration. So how I'm practicing for this is essentially just practicing it in full. I am getting help from my parents, I'm getting help from my boyfriend, and I'm just asking them to sit as the patient and to read through the list of things that I need to tick off as I go and making sure that I'm not forgetting anything and getting it in the right order. If there's no one helping me out, then I'm usually just having my iPad next to me with the list and I'll kind of pretend that I'm doing my CPA and then at the end I'll look at the list and see what I missed or if there's anything that I didn't do in the right order or anything like that. Because my CPA is tomorrow, I want to practice my skills this afternoon. So what I might do is do like a time lapse of how I do it, get a bit of an idea of what I'm doing. I might go and do my CPA practice right now and I'll take you guys along. Very exciting. <laughs> All right, I'm practicing in my bedroom and I've made up this little patient chart and it has just some paper forms that are laminated so that I can write on them and then like rub them out. And I've got, um, it's a bit messy. I've like written up some medication ones based on some ones that we did in class so that I can practice. And yeah, they just have a couple of medications on there that I can practice giving. And then I just have to complete this form as well. So yeah, I'm gonna get started and I'll time lapse it for you. <laughs>
Okay, I um, I think my camera actually stopped filming halfway through because the power ran out, I was like the battery ran out. But uh, yeah, it went pretty well. I did forget one major thing. I forgot to check the expiry dates on the medications. I did remember for like the dressing packs and everything, but for some reason I just blanked on the medications and I did everything else right except for that. So, and that's a fail element as well. So I'm going to try again a little bit later this afternoon, maybe when my boyfriend Ben gets home and he can kind of encourage me. <laughs> right now, I think I might go for a walk or a jog or something outside just to get out and about. I'm really sore. I went for a run yesterday and my body's really sore from that. So I don't want to push it today, but I think it's probably good for me to just get out of the house and do something. And then after that, I'm going to come home, do a little bit more work. I'm going to study on a couple of things. Tonight is actually the final of Game of Thrones. So I'm going to be watching that a little bit later as well. <laughs> Thank you. Ben has made me a nice cup of tea. I'm going to do some study. Um, oh, yeah, I watched Game of Thrones. It was good. <laughs> um, I'm not going to really comment on anything because I know there's a lot of controversy around this last episode and this last series. And it's a bit sad that it's ended because Game of Thrones was literally like my entire undergrad degree and like part of my master's now, I guess. So yeah, it's a bit sad that it's finished. I'm just having a look at my study guides and I've noticed that there are a couple of things I need to brush up on that I'd like to study this evening. So one section is the immune system. So I'm gonna have a look at that again now. I'm gonna get started and try and get some of this work done. I have finished a lot of the study that I needed to do today. It's almost 8 p.m. So I think it's probably an appropriate time to kind of wind down. I might say goodnight now because I mean, I'm just going to be hopping in the bath and then ironing my shirt. So <laughs> it's not that exciting. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked watching what I do on a day where I'm mostly just studying and preparing for assessments and exams. And yeah, let me know what you think of the techniques I use for studying, such as like the retrospective study guide or using Quizlet. And let me know if there's anything else that you guys like to do when you're studying, whether that's, I don't know, tips for how to study best or where you guys study. If you st like studying at like a library or at a cafe or something like that, then let me know because I'd really like to understand some other techniques and things that I could try out as well. I think that's it. Anyway, I am going to start to relax and wind down and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.